Okay, everybody. So we are here with Open House Mastery today. Jennifer, oh my God, it's so good to see you, lady. She should be teaching this class instead of me. I'm glad you're here. I'm actually going to ask you a favor at the end of this okay great so we're um at 12, uh, open house mastery here's the interesting thing about open house mastery this is normally a three-hour class and we take a field trip during it um so we're going to basically that field trip portion we're actually not going to do today unless i can maybe get jennifer thompson to do one later on when we can get people inside a house i might do that <laughs> This is my actual, tomorrow's my last day with Keller Williams Mountains to Sound. I'm actually moving to Arizona. So you guys are going to do half of this. And then I'm really hoping that Jennifer will take over teaching his class because she is so good at this. So I'm glad you're here, lady. All right. So let me ask you guys the question. What the heck are you doing at Open House Mastery? Why did you want to take this class? And everybody, if you have your camera turned off, we'd love it if you could turn it on. We'd love to hear your, see your faces. It'd be fantastic. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate that. Thanks, Lindsay. Awesome. So what do you want to get out of today? You are on mute, Trina. Okay. Jennifer said that this is one of the best classes that she's taken from you and that she's taken it five different times. And um, she learned something new every time. And she shared a little bit with us. And I just want to make the most out of hosting an open house because it is Zooming. Love it. Love it. Okay. Fantastic. I appreciate that training. Great. Who else? Why are you here? I'm a brand new agent. Only had one other open house previous to this. So I'm just looking for all the tips and tricks from all of you experienced uh, successful people. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Love it, Lauren. Thanks for sharing that. What else? Yeah, same, same. I'm very new also when I was doing the happy hour yesterday and somebody had some, said something about open houses and came highly recommended to take this course. Okay. So, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I um, have been in the business since 2009 and I was rookie of the year with my previous company. Um, and most of it came from open houses. And when I first started open houses, I really sucked at it. Um, I don't know if anybody, if, if you guys have known me, know me in person, you probably know I've got a really big personality and I would terrify people when they come to my open house. Like someone would walk in and you know, it's, it's kind of fun. Like, you know, people walk in, they're doing, I'm going, Hey, how are you? I'm Cole Finley. And they're like, ah, scary. <laughs> so I learned very quickly that I needed to change my approach. Um, and so I developed kind of a system that ultimately ended up working really, really great. And so I, I love teaching this. Uh, like I said, normally we like to go into uh, a house and we role play. So for all of you, I'm going to encourage you to uh, speak with your coach. So if it's Lindsay or if it's Brian or if it's Ryan um, or um, one of your team leaders or the extraordinary uh, Jennifer Thompson, who's on this class right, right now, that she actually, uh, I think she would teach it better than me because she actually better at it than I was back then. So um, she's fantastic. But I am gonna give you a whole lot of rundown of best practices. We're gonna talk about the rules for an open house. We're, we're gonna do a lot of highly interactive conversation today uh, about it. So. I think that when you walk away from here, you're gonna have a really good understanding of how to do it even on your own um, without so much having to go into the open house. We're gonna see if we can make that work. Okay, so one of the things I am gonna do, Goldie should have just emailed you all the packet that I'm actually gonna be showing you um, today. So I'm gonna go ahead and it doesn't look like I can attach something. Shoot, and I don't know why. Okay, so we're gonna email you the packet that I am gonna go through today. So I'm gonna to try to keep it on the screen. I'll probably be, um, so we can have some good conversation. I may be going back and forth uh, on the screen with showing what you're doing and then coming back. Is that okay with you guys? We kind of do a toggle a little bit. Okay, so when we think in terms of open houses, can everybody see it says, welcome to open house mastery for we here? Yes. yes. There are, um, five rules that always must be followed in doing an open house. So the number one rule to an open house is finding an open house 
that will bring you the most people. Let me ask you guys this question. Actually, I'll stop my screen here real quick. Let me ask you guys this question. Why do you have, why do you hold a house open? What's the, what's the reason you would hold a house open? You identify uh, find a buyer. Yeah. Buyers okay. or sellers. Okay. To, or to find a buyer for the house or to find a buyer for you. Potential for, for future and for you got it, Lauren. So basically, and you too, Mike, here's the thing. Most people think I do a whole a house open in order to sell that house. 99.9% .9 of the time, the person who comes in that open house will not buy that house. But a great majority of the time, they do not have an agent yet. Most people will even start going to open houses and things before they even will speak with an agent. They start wanting to get out there, see what's out there. Maybe they're driving past, they see signs. And these are people who have it in their head at some point that they want to buy a house. And by the way, Lauren, you are absolutely right. It's also about um, finding sellers for the house. Um, uh, sellers in that neighborhood or, or sellers who come in, they a lot of times are looky-loos because they're thinking about selling. So, and by the way, has anybody ever um, um, bought a house and they didn't even realize they were looking until all of a sudden they found it and they decided, oh my gosh, I have to move. Did anybody <laughs> ever do that? The first house I looked at. The very first house you looked at. You just went out and you went, oh my gosh, we have to have this house, don't care. My, my agent called, said, come over. Uh, it fit the program. Uh, they had underwear and clothes all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, look past this as a new roof, uh, new heater, new shelves, buy it. And I was like, sure. Okay, big <laughs> we one going for it. Love it. Um, and actually what I'm talking about is people who aren't even in a market for a house. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you two examples, actually. So um, it, it's 2015 and my it's gorgeous May day. Um, in the Kent Maple Valley area. And my husband and I were out for a drive and we passed by this sign that said at Sugarloaf Mountain, um, which is in Ravensdale, it's about a half an hour, uh, or not half an hour, probably 20 minutes um, east of where we were, says they're holding a fundraiser. And it was a fundraiser for an organization that we care about. And it was for a new development over there. So we thought, how fun with this, let's go to the fundraiser. And so they said they had live music and all that. So we drove by there um, and they had a model home open. Um, and we went through the model home and we went, oh, we love this so much. And all of a sudden we were not thinking about buying a house in the slightest. We were gonna be staying where we were for a while, no problem. And then all of a sudden we go to this house and we fell in love with it and we decided that it was time to move to another home. Now, actually, I actually didn't buy a home in that area, but that planted a seed for us. So a lot of times people will even come to an open house just because they saw it. Maybe they like to see houses and then they get an idea that they want to sell or they want to buy or both. Right. So sometimes people don't even know that they're in the market. So being out and being available for people is one of the smartest things that you can do in your real estate business, especially if you're new to the business. Sometimes when we're new, we don't have a lot of people in our sphere of influence yet, or sometimes we haven't learned all of the different ways to um, find business. Open houses, in my opinion, is the number one way when you're a newer agent or when you're really trying to build your, your business is to um, uh, is to do by open houses. That's how you're going to build your business. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So when we're doing an open house, our job is to drive traffic there. Our job is not to just open the house and hope people come in. So what we're going to be discussing today is how do we get the most people coming to your open houses so you get the biggest opportunity to find clients and build relationship during that open house and ultimately be able to close some deals. Does that sound good? All right. So just to let you know, there are five hard and fast rules, and these are incredibly important. There are five rules for sourcing an open house. By the way, these are non-negotiable rules. 
What does that mean? That basically means that don't you dare skip one of these. You will always do these. All right. So number one rule, the house has to be on the market no more than five days. Now I understand right now, this is really important. Houses are selling in hours rather than days. Would we agree on that? Mm -hmm. So if you're finding a house to hold open, the ones that you're going to be looking for are ones that are accepting offers the following week. Those are great ones to hold open. Okay, you're not going to hold a house open that is coming on the market right now and then it's going to go under contract in a few hours. We want those delayed, um, uh, those, those delayed responses. Now you could hold one open and it gets an offer on it. Um, and people might want to come look at it for backup. That, that is possible. But for the most part, you want an active listing. Now, let's say that the house has been on the market more than five days and it has not received any offers. Why would we not want you to hold that home open? Why do you think? It's not appealing to the masses. That is very possible, Chana. It's not appealing to, to the masses. It may be that there's a reason why it doesn't sell. Does anybody know the two reasons why a house doesn't sell? It's only two reasons ever. Two reasons a house doesn't sell. It's overpriced or it's ugly. It's overpriced or it's ugly. Now, ugly could be the neighbor, could be the neighborhood, could be it's not particularly staged well, could be all sorts of things, could be overpriced. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons why a house might not sell, but it's, it falls within those two categories, overpriced or it's ugly. But no more than five days on the market at the time you source it. We'll talk about when you source those in just a minute. Number two rule, it has to have compelling pictures. Now you'll notice it doesn't say it has to have good pictures. It has to have compelling pictures. What does compelling mean? Makes you want to see more. Okay, attractive. That sounds good, Mike. What what else was that, Lauren? Uh, just something that makes you want to see more. Yeah, it makes you want to see it. It compels you to want to go check out that house. So not only are the pictures compelling, but the order of the pictures are compelling, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. The rule three, it's got to be priced right. It has to be priced right. Now, how do you guys know if a property is priced right? Especially if you're a new agent. Comps. Okay, comps. Gonna... Tell me a little bit more about comps. What about comps? Well, they're, they're local to that, you know, right? and they share the same uh, look as the, the home that you're selling and the square footage and it's, it's similar. It's similar. And here's the biggest deal about this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach this till the cows come home. You gotta be inside houses all the time. If you're a new agent, every single day, you should be going and seeing homes. So let me tell you how this works. Okay, you're going to break it down into price point. Okay, so what's the lowest price point in your area? What do you think? 350. Yeah. Okay, 350. Entry level home, 350. So if I was shopping, what would be the price bracket around that 350 range? What do you think? Would 350 to 400 be a, a price bracket that I might search in if I'm if I'm in that um, first time home buyer kind of realm? Yeah, probably. Would that be fair? Okay. So what's the next level up? What bracket would be the next level up? Four to five. Four yeah. to five. I think that's really good. Four to five hundred. What's the next level up? Six to seven. Okay. So maybe five to six and then maybe six to seven, then maybe seven plus. Would yeah. that work? Okay. Every single day, 
you're the most, the biggest value that you bring to any client is understanding the market and understanding market value. The only way to really, really understand that is if you're going to houses every single day. Okay. Now, if you were going to go view houses today, how many houses do you think you could go see today? If Probably three. Point. Could do three. Johnny, think three. Okay. Who else? I think you could do five. Yeah, I think, I think three to five is a really good number, right? Now imagine this, let's say, let's keep it on low end. Let's say three. If this week I was able to go see three homes a day, that's 15 homes for the week. Mm -hmm. And I did that every single week. Do you think I would start really understanding if homes are going to sell or not? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your job now, by the way, right now, you might only be seeing houses Thursday through Monday. That might be the way that you're going to be doing it. Those are your five days, but probably because on Monday and Tuesday, they're probably doing offer um, reviews if it's like that. Okay. So here's how I'm going to do it. On Thursday, I'm going to go see all the homes that are on the market between 300 and 400,000. On um, Friday, I'm going to see 300 to 400. On Saturday, I'm going to see 400 to 500. You see where, or 300, 400, 400, 500, 500 to 600. On hmm. Sunday, I'm going to be 600 to 700. And then on Monday, I'm going to be all, everything above that. Now, why would I want to look at homes that are all in the same price point at the same time? Just to get an idea what's, you know, the difference between just the difference and the similarity, just to have Absolutely. an idea. Absolutely. What, what's, what is in that price point? What sells, what doesn't? Because here's what I'm going to do. I, does everyone, everyone have a cart saved um, on your matrix? Here's the, I used to love to play this game. I would be going out previewing and there are homes that I'd go, man, that's ugly. I wonder if that's going to sell. I go, wow, that's really good looking. I wonder how qu quick it's going to sell. I put it in my cart and I would always, I, I would play the game of, I bet that's going to sell in two days and see if mm -hmm. I was right. <laughs> Pretty soon after a few months of doing this guys, you get so good at knowing when a house is going to sell that you become the best listing agent ever. Mm because you have been out there really looking at what is selling. When you play that game and you're in three houses every single day that you work, at least five days a week, wow. So you're always comparing apples to apples. You're always within a particular price point, okay? So if you're out seeing homes all the time and you're holding open houses in areas that you've been out seeing homes all the time, that's when you know a property is priced right. It's going to take you two months, maybe three months to get really good at it, but you will eventually be able to know if that house is priced right or not. What do you think about that? I yeah. wish I hadn't thought of this a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's super good because even if you were showing a house in the same price range and they weren't interested in that house, but that was their price range, then you've seen all the other houses around, so... Makes I love it, sense. Mike. Perfect, perfect, Mike and Keith. Thank you for saying that. That's, that. that is so true. We wish you would have known this, but that's how we do it. So we systematically, and if you've known anything about Keller Williams now, you'll know that everything has a system. You're systematically viewing homes every single week. That's how we know we're priced right. Okay, here's the next one. Rule number four. It can no, be no more than three turns. This is your open house from a major intersection. No more than three turns from a major intersection. Why is that? What do you traffic, think? Traffic, traffic, traffic. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Tell me more about that, Lauren. Um, I mean, well, it kind of says it down in rule five as well, but just the ability to be able to put out signs in a highly trafficked area, just to make sure that people who maybe, like you've said before, aren't, aren't necessarily out looking, mm -hmm. what, it will catch their eye and send them over your way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, has anybody ever been to an open house where you had to turn and turn and turn, but then you got lost and you gave up? <laughs> People will do that. Again, we are trying to drive traffic. So it's really important to do so. And then five, rule five is the ability to strategically place signs for the open house. 
Now we're going to go through how we strategically do that in a minute, because we'll take a look at, at some listings. Okay. Um, but this, the placement of signs is incredibly important to drive traffic. Incredibly important to drive traffic. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go over to do, do a new share here. Huh. Can everybody see my matrix? Yes. Much bigger. Okay. So let's go and let's find a bracket of homes. What search should we do for homes? What, what price bracket should we go for? What do you think? What do you want to do? Four fifty-five. Four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand. Can I make it four fifty to five fifty? Would that be okay, Keith? Yes. <clears throat> All right. And so, what area? Excuse me, should before we you start, should we always go um, one hundred thousand difference? You know what? I think one hundred thousand is a really good kind of bracket. Oh, okay. um, sometimes if it's on the lower end, it might be like three fifty to four. Mm -hmm. uh, or it might be four to five, but you know, our 455, 50, yeah, let's just go for it. But yeah, I think sometimes that's it. Now, once you start getting out in the market, you really start seeing a lot. You'll actually even understand when I've got a buyer, maybe they're not going to have a hundred thousand um, dollar range. Maybe it is a 50,000, maybe 75,000. But when we're doing this exercise right now, we're just going to go for a hundred thousand. Okay. What area should we look in? Let's pick one area. What do you think? Kent. Great. Should we do 330? Okay. All right. So in the 450 to $500,000, we've got active and we've got 10 matches. I'm going to go to zero to five days on the market. Mm. Got it? Okay. Okay. I'm only looking for houses that have been on the market no more than five days at the time I'm sourcing it. Today's Wednesday. It's a good day to source my open house if I'm finding it this way. I'm going to tell you in a minute a more um, um, efficient way to find your open house, but we're going to go this way. So we've got five matches. All right. Now, what we're going to take a look at, we're going to see if this house passes muster. We know it's in a price bracket. We know that it's no more than five days on the market. So the second rule, okay, it has to have compelling pictures, right? So let's take a look at these pictures. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being, oh my gosh, I have to go see that right now. It's so cool. And one being, uh, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Scale of one to 10, what would you call this as far as a compelling picture? Maybe like five or four. six. Okay, a four for you, a five or six, Jessica. I'm say five or six. Five or six. Okay. Now you're going to love this. Here's the rule. Do most buyers get online now and look at houses? Yes. They do, don't they? Even before they get an agent, they're online looking at houses. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. They are going to start looking. Maybe it's their very first week and they start looking. They're only going to give you three clicks before they start getting disinterested three clicks. Now here's how most people do it. They'll take a couple of shots of the front of the house, then they'll go to the front door, then they'll go into the hallway, they're going to walk you through. Now walking them through the house is important, but the first thing is important is to capture their attention. So what we want is the front of the house, then the most the best selling feature of the house, then the second best selling feature of the house, now you walk me through the house. Then you go to the front door and then you take me through, okay? But you got to hit the selling features first. That's what makes it compelling. Okay, now we've got a picture here of a big tree that's leaning over in the right and a bunch of blue sky and there might be a house below it. Do you see how this picture is, is framed? Okay, so let's take a look at it. We're going to click our next one. Okay, which picture was better, the first one or the second one, by the way? Second one. Second one, yeah. So is this, maybe the first one is a five and this one's a six? Okay, mm. what do you think we're gonna have a picture of? What's your guess? Front door. Front yep. door, yeah. Okay, 
Now, by the way, have you ever seen those where you click on them and they have outside, 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 and you're going, get me inside the house. What's wrong with it? That's the question that most buyers will ask. Let's go inside. Okay. Those are beautiful floors. I might've mm -hmm. put that as my second picture. It's got some columns. It's got some really tragic drapes, but that's okay. Okay. Is this house compelling? No. Nope. It might be in the price point. So I'm gonna take a look at the price point here. Okay. We're 450,000 for 1200 square feet in this area. Does anybody know if that's overpriced or underpriced? Let's do a comparison. Uh, what is it, three bedroom? Yeah. I'm thinking overpriced. Exactly. So it's three bedroom, one bath. Okay. Three bedroom, one bath. It's 375 a square foot. We're going to look through those pictures again. So just so we get a good idea. So the floors are nice. Are we all agreeing on the floors? Not too bad. Okay. It does have a fireplace over here. It's an interesting placement for the fireplace. So don't burn <laughs> your couch. If I can't put my couch there, where am I putting it? <laughs> like, where does my TV go? It's got columns. This house is wanting to be grand. Do you get that sense? Mm -hmm. It wants to be fabulous. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea where to put my TV. So you better, you got to know where to put things, right? So, because if someone comes in there, they might have these same answers. Lots of pictures of a dining table. <laughs> There's my galley kitchen. Okay. What, what, what word comes to mind for this kitchen? You are dated. Dated. Dated right down to the very, very unfinished work. Okay. Now. I'm going to ask you based on the pictures, is this an open house house? No, no, it isn't. Is it? It's not. Do you think it's going to drive traffic at that price point? I don't know if it would. Yeah. Now I'm not in the market as much anymore. Jennifer, is this, is this well-priced? Before I answered that, I would actually pull up what sold within a quarter of a mile. And I would look at the agent remarks and see if some of them said multiple offers received. I would do a little research before I could answer that. If it was an area that I wanted my signs blasted everywhere because I want to get in, I may consider it. Okay. So Great that's a long girl answer too. I, I can't say it's overpriced. Just yet. Everything is a little nutty this time of right now. So I love that answer. Does everybody understand were... what she said there? Look at that. Okay, great. So Big, huge bed and a little, little bitty thing. So there's, it, it, it's got some challenges for me as far as being compelling at that price point. Don't know yet, but right now it could be anything. Now here's, but let's do some comparisons now. So we know this house is three bedroom, one bath, 1200 square feet and $450,000 with pictures that are just okay. Would we all agree on that right now? Okay, mm -hmm. so let's take the next house. This is 474, 900, 2,500 square feet, three bedroom, two bath, 187 per square foot. Just came on the market today. Mm -hmm. Scale of one to 10. One. <laughs> Shannon says one. I was okay. going to say two, a little more generous, but. Okay. So we got three clicks, right? Here's one, two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Three, That's right better. now. Uh, that would have been my first picture. There we go. That right. one's the best so far. That yeah, is the best so far. Perfect. Based on the three pictures, which house is more valuable? The first one or oh, the second first one? First house. First one right now. But if we went through three, let's keep going. Four. Okay, so first of all, should they fire their agent? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why? Yes. <laughs> really bad pictures. Dark. pictures some of the worst i think i've seen yeah these are these are the what not to do pictures will we agree yeah <laughs> because oh. if i'm looking at it it's like maybe the kitchen's not bad it's got some big space if that had some compelling the pictures, fireplace is actually kind of cool but you can't tell you can't tell you can't tell yeah now if this had great pictures which would be more valuable this home this one this and one. i would Bigger focus work. on the kitchen first before anything else it's very possible we keep looking at the same room views this look so if you stand in this house you have to tilt your head in order to be able to see this 
because it's all it's like this was taken with like a first generation digital camera exactly <laughs> exactly right so this is we already saw this picture this is a real mistake yeah. So, so it's hard to tell which one would be more valuable. This one's bigger mm -hmm. and there may be, I would want to go, th I would walk through both of these houses before I'd ever commit to doing an open house on them, but I'd walk through. Okay. Now we know by square footage, this one also is on a lot that's 7,500 and this is 7,000. Mm -hmm. So pretty equal lot sizes here. Okay. So is this an open house house? No, no way. Based on those pictures, there's no way I would hold that house open. No way. You have to pay me and I'll go. Yeah. So bless Stacy's heart. She needs to come um, take a class because that would be good. <laughs> now, it could be that it's renters. They wouldn't let her in. The renters were, took the pictures. We don't know. So I never want to diss another agent for that. Sometimes there's just reasons for it. Um, but for the most part, I, I'm really, I'm not even going to take a listing unless I can have compelling pictures on it. I'm just not going to do it. Okay. Here we have, we're at 480. 1540 square feet, three bedrooms, one and three quarter baths. Okay, so our first house was 1200 square feet at 450. This one is 1540 square feet at 480, so 30,000 more. All right, let's take a look. Scale of one to 10. Mm, that looks nice. Yeah, that's okay. like a six, seven for me at least. Okay, <clears throat> great. Great. What do you score do you think I'm looking for in order to be able to hold it open? Seven. Seven plus. I'm going to say eight plus. I'm going to say eight plus. Okay. But we're about a seven here, we think. All right. Now we're going to look again. We're going to make a judgment after first three pictures. There's one. There's an overexposed two. <coughs> an overexposed three. Mm. Okay. Why did they use those <laughs> pictures? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. that. Let's go to four. Yeah. Just going to keep clicking until we figure this out. I am really, really trying to sell a very small boxy kitchen. Mm. I'm not going to have more than one picture on a boxy kitchen. Just not going to do it because now all I'm doing is feeling crowded. This would probably be the picture I'd use. What? Okay, that's not so bad. Blurry. Crooked. Wow. Okay. Tragic comes to mind, but at least it's nice and clean. <laughs> at least it's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. If this had really great HD photos using a proper camera, this one might be a, actually a really good open house. I can't tell because the camera's too close up. I'm taking pictures. One of my cameras close up. I'm taking picture of furniture, not rooms. Remember, I want to take picture of rooms. Rooms require a wide angle, always. Okay? This guy sells lots of uh, real estate too, so he could afford it. <laughs> he could. Now maybe he's doing this. This first one. Who, who's the agent? Oh, Don. Yeah. Okay. First. First. Uh, First time home buyer, yeah, sure. Now, right now, maybe just get a, get used to anything. Does everybody know about our Exposio program at, at our offices? Um, we talk about Exposio. Exposio is an amazing camera. Exposio is a company and you get to rent the camera. You pay out of closing, so there's no out of pocket cost. They teach you how to take the pictures yourself. You check out the camera from our office. You can go take the pictures yourself. You can develop them on your own computer with their program. If the house doesn't sell, you don't pay. How would that be if you didn't have to have out-of-pocket costs for your pictures? Amazing. Yeah, it's really good. So make sure you're checking into that because it'd be a lot better. Because all we're doing, he's selling a TV and a, and a dresser here. He's not selling a room. I'm kind of sort of that room. By the way, he's also taking it too high of a level. He's looking down at everything, if you'll notice that. Okay, is this an open house house right now? Just along the pictures. Okay, let's keep going. Here's our fifth one. All right, this one is about 500,000. 
1,600 square feet, three bedrooms, one and three quarter baths. So very similar, 8,000 square foot. So it's very similar to this one. Okay. All right. Scale of one to 10. Eight. 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 I would call that an eight too. I would. Jessica, you're saying five. Why is it a five for you? I think it's just personal preference since I hate split levels. Okay. <laughs> great. So remember, and I love that you brought that point up, Jessica. That's great. We can bring our own bias into this sometimes. If I'm really trying to, I have to sometimes take my bias out because there's going to be somebody who loves split levels with a red door. Okay. So sometimes we just have to check it. I'm exactly like you, Jessica. This would not be my favorite house, but it may be the perfect open house house. So let's see if we can find it. Okay. All right. Second picture. Did they just sell me? Yep. They did. They did not take me through the front door. They showed me a kitchen, a nice white kitchen has been updated. Ooh, what's our third picture? I'm excited. Ah. <laughs> now That's I'm so starting nice, to see big some. open space. Okay, right, Shannon, big open space. Really bright. Really mm. bright, looks like fresh paint, really clean, right? Nice different uh, angle there. Look at how pretty the flowers are behind, nice drapes. Now, this picture, okay, this house so far compared to this house, mm. which one has the higher value? This one, last one, yeah. Here's the thing, if this house had the same type of pictures, it may look overpriced compared to the other one, but this one has better pictures. Therefore, people would pay more for it based on the pictures. Understand market value here? Based on the pictures, it's fascinating. Now, I don't really know that until I've been inside all of these houses. But let's keep going. Kind of digging on this house. Okay, nice, clean. Kind of put together this definitely a first time home buyer's house. Would you agree? Look at that bathroom is updated. Agent did a really good job. Look at that grass, that awesome deck. Great pictures. I know this agent, she does a great job. I think she actually took my class a few years ago. I'm not going to blame it on that. All right. Now, this is no more than five days on the market. It's been on the market for one day. It's got compelling pictures. What's the next, what was the next one? Do anybody remember number three? Priced right. Priced right. Now, the only way we know that is if we are really out in that market, we're looking at things, we're looking at comps. This is gonna take some homework. So if I'm thinking that this is gonna be the house that I want to do an open house on, I gotta do a little homework first. I'm still not gonna to commit to doing the open house yet. All right. Now, no more than three turns from a major intersection. So let's say this is the one I'm thinking about. So let's go to the map. All right, here's our house. Here's 120th Avenue, 112th Avenue. It's 120, 116th is right here. 116th is a major thoroughfare, would we agree? Yes. Look at this. What? Booyah, it's Why right not? there. I can, I can go one, two, okay? It's right off of this street. It's just even one. It's right on the corner. Can I drive traffic there? What do you oh, think, I Mike? can't see what you're seeing. Yeah, I'm yeah, not seeing any kind of map. Oh, I'm gosh, map. I'm so yeah. sorry. All right, let me do a new share. Thank you for saying that. Here's our map. Okay, so I had it pulled out like this. So we had 120th, 116th, 104th, 104th. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. All right. So if we look at the major intersections around here, I've got 104th. I got 240th. I got 116th. And I don't know if I'm going to go all the way up here, but let's just take a look. I could probably get to 208th. Sure. Okay. Now, here's the thing on this particular house. It is right on the corner. Mm. That's a good thing. That's a bad thing. Why is it a good thing? Traffic. Uh huh. Why is it a bad thing? Traffic. 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 <laughs> traffic. traffic. Okay. Other kind of traffic. So we're going to get into a little ways of how we overcome that, but this location probably couldn't be better. Okay. So 
I have got to have location, 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 no more than three turns for a major intersection. You better believe it. So if we look at our major intersections here, we have got 116th, one, two. Got it? If I go from um, 104th, I'm here. One, two, three. Got it? It is really easy to get to this house. All right. The next one, I have got to be able to strategically sign it. So I'm going to do my open house. How many signs would I use to hold this house open? Three or four. Can you zoom out a little bit? I sure could. Thank you. So three or four, you think? What else? Who else got a different idea? I'll say like five, maybe even six, depending on how far you want to expand out. Okay. Who else? One, two, uh, three, three, four, six. Seven. Okay. I have six signs. I'm going to use all of them. Great. Jessica, you think five. Jennifer, what do you think? Every sign you have and more. <laughs> right. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use about 20 to 25 signs to sign this. Wow. Oh, more. Okay. Now, shall I show you how? I want yes. you to think about the does anybody drive past some signs today, by the way? Or even this weekend, did anybody pass by some open house signs? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's usually just a sign there, right? And there might've been several signs on one particular corner, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the thing to understand about signs is you want your signs to stand out more than anybody, anybody else's else. signs. You with me? Okay. Nobody should be able to compete with you on your sign placement. Signs drive traffic. People are looking in particular neighborhoods and you want people to see your signs. And by the way, if you put energy into your signs, I'm gonna tell you what that is in just a minute, you will drive traffic. Now, I can do two things. I want you, so he, we're here on 240th and 116th, right? I'm gonna kind of go in there. I'm gonna place a sign here, 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 and here. I want all, signs on four corners of a major intersection. Now I'm gonna get really, really crazy with you. And I'm going to put balloons, three balloons to each sign. Okay. Three balloons on each sign. I'm going to make sure those balloons are no more than two feet above the top of the sign. You're going to get, see how detailed I'm at. This is open house mastery. Remember mm -hmm. now, how many of you guys have your open house signs? Great. What color are they? Red. The red is a red. <laughs> the red, white, and black, right? What color are my balloons? Yellow. Nope. Red. Red, white, and black. Red and white. Red and white. Now, let me teach you something. Today it's sunny outside, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have three balloons. They're going to be red and white. What combination are they? Mm. Mike, you're on mute. Two red, one white. Okay, today it's really sunny out, right? You almost got it perfect, Lauren, but it's the opposite. Two white and one red. Why on a sunny day would it be two white and one red? The white reflects the sun. The white reflects. The white reflects. All right, now it's a cloudy day. Lauren, oh. <laughs> two, two red, red and one white. white. Why would it be two red and one white? I'm gonna stop my show. The red's more eye-catching. The red is more eye-catching, okay? So on those corners, every single corner and three balloons, no more than two feet high on all of my signs. Does anybody else's sign show up now? No, I eclipsed every sign out there. Nobody's gonna compete with me on my signs, okay? Now, what if I did not have the, the money to go ahead and buy balloons. By the way, in my neighborhood, I uh, used to have a party city, it, a place was called um, Party Etc. cetera. Uh, Mike owned Party Etc. And I would do open houses three days a week, Thursday mm. or Friday at a twilight open and then Saturday and Sunday, okay? 
every week for a year, I did this, by the way. By the way, my very first year, I did 36 transactions and almost all of them are on open houses. Wow. That is because of this effort, okay? And three a week for an entire year. Do you hmm. think I made some bank that, that year? I learned that it took effort, okay? So I'd call Mike. I'd say, Mike, I need 20 sets of sunny day balloons. He would know that he was going to be making um, uh, 40 um, white balloons and 20 red balloons. Okay. And I knew I could go by, by the way, I got really good at picking these up in my, uh, um, in my local. I want to show you something real quick though. Hang on a sec. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you know this, but if you can see it, they can actually put bags around your balloons, keep them all together oh. so they don't fly away. Okay. It's very cool. Ooh. I actually have some balloons for a celebration we're doing here today. So that's it. But they can actually put bags around your balloons. Um, if you go to Party Party City, they can do it for you and they can get really good used to. So if you wanted to buy balloons, you absolutely could. If you wanted to just buy balloons themselves and helium, you could do that. But let's say you don't have the money for the balloons. Here's how you do it. On, I'm gonna go back to my share here real quick. On this corner here and this corner here, I would put two signs together arrows facing to I put two signs together. Isn't it weird? You see two signs together on this corner and on that corner. So I'm gonna use four signs again, but I'm gonna group them together as opposed to putting them on each corner. Mm. Have you ever seen two signs together? No. Let me tell you, it's gonna eclipse a one sign every single time. And if you've got it on two corners, make sense? So two each next to each other. Two next to each other two next to each other. So here's, we'll kind of move out again here. So I'm gonna do four here, four here. I am probably gonna go up here, four here. I don't think I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna do four, four and four, it's 12. Okay, now let's go in a bit. Whoop. I'm gonna do two here, two here. We're at 16. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm right in front of the house, 17. Right by the garage, 18. Right by the front door, 19. All of them with balloons. Have I created some energy? Did yes. every neighbor see it? Yes. I might even go over here somewhere. But I'm gonna, nobody's going to be able to miss my open house because of my signs. What do you think about that? Did that create some energy around it? I'm sorry, what would you say, Chana? I need to order more signs. <laughs> Here's how you do that too, by the way, Charlie. I love that you said that. Every closing, buy five. Okay. Every closing, buy five. And when you can, buy a bigger car. By the way, um, I got to the point, I had some neighbor kids, which were really, really great. I paid them every um, week to go put out my signs for me. It was worth my time. Yeah. They got really good at knowing exactly what I wanted. We'd look at a map every time. I'd say, okay, go do these. They would do them. It'd be great. I'd pay them money after they got the signs out. I always go check, make sure they did it properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, but every closing. So you might only have five now. Well, that's what you're going to do. Then you're going to put a lot of balloons on them. Like put five balloons. If only if you got is five signs, put five balloons each. But make your stand out in some way, shape or form to any other that are out there. Does that make sense? Yes. There's dollar store too. You get below the dollar yeah, store. You can. Now. Jennifer's Jennifer actually has a really good idea about um, what to place on your open house, Jennifer, on your signs. I use oh, rain? Uh, pinwheels. Yeah. So I was just about to say when it's raining or it's misty, balloons are no good. Balloons start sagging and they get sad and old. And so what you do is you can go to the dollar store. By the way, don't get that little itty bitty ones. Get the big ones. Pinwheels, mm -hmm. you actually tape them inside. So you know how the A board's got that gap? Uh -huh. You can tape them inside there. And when people drive by, it makes them spin. Do you do all of your um, pinwheels now, Jen? Or do you do balloons? I do all of them. 
because it's kind of like the signature and Love it. Um, there were too many times that I came and either somebody needed balloons for a birthday party and they were all gone or I was like, screw it. I have all my signs ready to go with the pinwheels, always tape to them. So literally when it's an open house, I go grab everything and put it in the car. I don't have to mess with tape at all. It's done. Love it. Right yes. now the dollar store has red and black ones. There you oh, go. Perfect. Okay. So <laughs> absolutely. That is, that is really possible for us. Okay. The next thing is you got to make sure that that neighborhood, you can actually put signs in the neighborhood. Some neighborhoods do not allow you to do that. Okay. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. She may not even know that, but some of them won't allow you to do that. Okay. So if we look at this house, let me share my screen again. So this was our house that we're looking at, right? Okay. Now. I am not going to speak to that agent about holding their house open if it's not my listing until I've gone and seen it. Why is that important? It may smell. <laughs> sure, it may smell. That's a great point, Keith. It what might else? look really different from when the photos were taken. It might look really different when the photos were taken. Great, keep going. You guys are doing awesome. Maybe the neighborhood's not as appealing as that one house. You absolutely have that, Sarah. Not as appealing. Mm -hmm. What else? You want to familiarize yourself with the neighborhood in, in general? Exactly. I think that's a great point. All of the above apply. Some of the biggest things are power lines, train mm -hmm. tracks, hoarder neighbors, cat smell, <laughs> Um, cigarette smell, right? Uh, there's a lot of things and factors that be it. It could be that the noise is so loud that you can't even drown it out inside the house. Quick question. Yeah. That I just heard, I, I can look at this and then ask them if I can do their open house. This is you like a sure thing. Sure can. Oh my God, you sure can. I thought it was only question too. too. I thought it was just in my company, so it could just be anybody because you're basically anybody. Start with your own company, and I'm going to teach you how to do that in just a minute. But if you can't find one in here, go do somebody else's. By the way, here's the most fun trick one of your A boards, you know how there's the yard arm in the front? One of your A boards fits perfectly over that yard arm. You can actually have your sign on the yard arm. Just an old trick. Um, no, you can absolutely do someone else's. Now, a lot of companies won't let you do those. But a lot of companies will. It just depends. So don't it's be afraid cold. of that. Okay. Are we? Are, do we have it so far? What do you think? Okay. So here's let's review. We've had our five non-negotiable rules. What's the first rule? More than five days on the market. No more than five days on the market at the time you source it. What's the second rule? Compelling, Compelling pictures. pictures. Compelling pictures. The third. Priced right. Priced right. The fourth? No more than three turns. No more than three turns for a major intersection. And the fifth? Strategically placed Nine. signs. Strategically placed signs. Can we do all of those things with this listing we just saw? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it an open house house? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So I want to do another search let's go back to criteria let's do 700 plus let's do 700 to 900 is that okay mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. area we only have three houses here all right so we have new construction home we have uh, a nice large home and we have one that's hard to tell so this is 2200 square feet this is 3600 square feet and this is 2200. Interesting. Which one do I want to look at? That's a nice one. Okay. I'm going to go with this one. It's bigger. Yeah. Might be a better, this one's 875. This one's 719. Big price difference here. This one's 879. So these two are similar, but this is a bit much bigger home than this one at 2200. Can everybody see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Scale one to 10. Nine. Uh -uh. Eight, nine. 
eight, nine, we feeling it? Okay. Yeah. No. Okay, what are you thinking, Trina? It's like a five or a six. That tree, the angle is just all wrong. Okay. The tree right in front of it, you can't even see the house. Yeah, I think, is that a tree that's fallen, by the way? Wow. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay, we can't see the house, but you know what, let's keep going. Big property with mm. side entrance. Wow. Hmm. Is wow. that a selling feature? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's a selling feature. You better believe it. And she did a great job of even outlining it. Love yeah. that. Okay. Look at that. Look at this wow. big gazebo looks like, or maybe that's a pool. Amazing. I don't know. This Cole, is can you use, could you use that photo as the main photo? Yes. Or does it's it have outside. to be the front? No, nope, okay. it can be just as long as it's outside. Absolutely. You can. Because look at this upper deck, lower deck. Yep. This is entertainer, entertainer's dream right here. I probably mm -hmm. would have used maybe this one, Trina. That's a good call. Yeah. Okay. Now we're, they're going to walk us in the house. It's a pretty door. As a buyer, yeah. that would have got my attention. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That door is pretty. It is. Ooh. It's gorgeous. Look at how pretty this one is. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean. Just the main well, photo has to be extended. Outside to be exterior or a, a shot from inside the house looking out, either one. That's a great photo. Yep, I'll be honest with you. I probably would have used this one as my second photo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have used that first one that they had or the other outdoor pictures. Hard to tell. Okay, now let's do a comparison. 875, 3,600 square feet. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right, 879, 2,200 square to. feet. All right, let's take a look. Looks like it's new construction. Scale of one to 10. Hmm. I think an eight. Okay. Yeah. Seven or eight for me. Okay. The first picture was a six because it's down. It, it just. Yeah, it just, you it's can't tell anything by it, can you? You can't tell which house it is, really. Yeah. So we kind of think it's that. I'm not, yeah, it's an interesting, I don't know why Karina did that, but let's keep going. Front door. She's walking us through the house. She's still walking us through the house. You see how the other one, they, they set up our picture so that it was really close. It was right there. This one, she's walking us. Okay. Now, mm. take a look at that picture for a second. Okay. And let's go back here. Take a look at this picture or this picture. Mm -hmm. Which house is better now? This. That one. This is a, a thousand square feet um, bigger, right? Or more, mm -hmm. 1,400 square feet bigger. Just as good of, of finishes, would you agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One's new construction, one's older. I think either of these houses would be fantastic open house house. Okay. Now let's go ahead though. We don't, we, it's only by compelling pictures. Let's take a look. Let me share this with you. Hang on a second. All right, here is our map. This is of our first, our big house. All right, so what do we got here? Is Central Avenue a major intersection here? So maybe, let's see how we get there. Maybe off of here. One, two, kind of three. Not sure. I'm off the major intersection. I might even call that a major, but probably Titus would be. So, okay, so one, two, three and a half. Hmm. Might work, but it's, it's, it's got such compelling pictures that it may work for me, I'm not sure. All right, let's try the other house. All right, in this one. Okay, can you see the map? Oh, look at this. It's right there, but yeah, okay. Oh yeah. So I'm thinking both of them are probably okay from that perspective. The new construction though, can I place open, can I place out? And by the way, new construction, they might have their own stuff going on. So it might be like newer construction. Got it? Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're really starting to see exactly how you pick a house. Does everybody get that? Yeah. All right. That do you see why it's important and the pictures are important and how it all all lives, right? 
Okay. So now let's get into, and I'm gonna have to move pretty quickly here, but we're gonna get into getting the house set up. Now, first of all, before we go into that, let's have a conversation about year. How many of you are new agents? Raise your hand. New agents under a year. Okay, great. One of the biggest things that you want to do is create relationship with experienced agents. And I'm going to let's share, um, let's share Alex Frankoff. So he's the number two agent in our office. Alex does not have a buyer's agent and Alex has 16 listings on right now. Do you think he might need someone to hold his homes open? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. Let's pretend it's Monday. Do you think Alex knows if he's going to be putting a house on the market on Thursday? Yes. He does. So if it were me, I would be calling Alex. I say, Alex, what do you have coming on this week? I think I'm looking for an open house. Can I go see it? Okay. Remember, I didn't say, can I hold it open? I'm going to say, can I go see it? Now I've created a great relationship with Alex because I got to know him. So if there's an agent that you want to get to know, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, can I bring you coffee? I'd love to hear all about your business. It's one of the first things you're doing. So Jennifer, if I'm a new agent and I called you and I say, hey, Jennifer, I would love to know a little bit about your business. Can I bring you coffee? Would you say no? I would say yes, please. I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> Absolutely. She is a very, very busy agent. Um, Jennifer's known as a mega agent in our world. So I, just, I love having her on here. Okay. And so you're going to give her a call and you're going to start to get to know her say, um, Jennifer, by the way, I'm building a lot of my business with open houses. I would love the opportunity to hold one of your homes open one day. Would that be possible? And she's going to say, why don't we do it together? <laughs> Now, why would she say that? But most Asians don't do it that way. But why would she say it that way? What do you think? She wants to train you she to make sure that you're hosting her open houses the way that she wants them done. The way that she wants them done. Absolutely. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create relationship with a minimum of five agents in our office. And maybe even five agents in our sister office. So if Mountains to Sound or Puget Sound, I'm going to find the top five listing agents. I'll guarantee you one of them is going to need a house held open. So my calls, I've got lead generation time, right? On Mondays, part of my lead generation time is calling my agents to find out if there's a house to hold open that week. Okay. So don't wait for the house to be put on the market Go find it from the agents that you've created a relationship with. Now, let's say there isn't one house within either of our market centers that you can hold open. That's then when you can go out to the, the normal marketplace and see if you can find someone. By the way, when I first started, it was all about bank-owned homes. It was short sales. It was bankruptcy homes. So um, Newberry Realty was amazing. If I didn't have uh, my our own company to, to um, hold open, I actually got really good. And I'd call Dave Newberry. Dave, I see that house you got. Can I hold it open? By the way, it might have been on the market for two weeks. Didn't matter. I can hold it open then. Now it's, it's very, very shy. Okay. So make relationship with other agents. All right. We're going to go through the rest of this pretty quickly. Again, all of this was emailed to you. So make sure you check on that. If you did not get the materials emailed, I want you to uh, email Goldie Cole Merritt. So Goldie K at kw.com and say, hey, can I get the open house class packet? If you did not get it. All right, let me share my screen. So we're going to be talking about what we do before the open house. So before the open house, I'm going to source and schedule the open house using the five non-negotiable rules. I'm going to give the owner the seller's checklist. We'll look at that in just a minute. So before, uh, if it's my own listing, I've given the owner the seller's checklist. Okay, you're not going to do that if it's, if it's another buyer. I'm going to install the KW mobile search app on my phone. Hopefully all of you have the mobile search app for KW and you're using it. By the way, I'm in the process of moving to Arizona. I discovered that our mobile search is better than Redfin and Zillow. 
it's awesome. Like I don't use anything but KW. It's, it's been the coolest thing. And I started with Zillow. I shouldn't have, cause I'm a big proponent of our, our technology, but I didn't do that. All right. Check <laughs> if the electricity and water is on. You might have really pretty pictures with electricity and everything on. And then all of a sudden you go to the house to, to preview it. You're always going to preview before you ask to do the house. And all of a sudden you find out the electricity is off and the water's not on and it's February. Okay. Mm, cool. By the way, has anybody ever, um, does anybody know when, when I say winterized, what winterized pipes are? Winterized basically means all the water's been shut off and, and the pipes have been filled with antifreeze so they do not break. I didn't know that in one of my very first houses in the middle of February with, with the house winterized and with the big, huge cup of coffee I had before I went to the open house. <laughs> um, that toilets are completely closed when the house is winterized. Make sure that you can use the plumbing because I couldn't. And I couldn't leave. That so was hell. <laughs> that was hell. Until my husband brought me a big, huge coffee can. So literally, that's how bad it was. Okay, TMI. I know, but I just wanted to share that with you. Okay. <laughs> Do the marketing activities. You're going to post it online and door knock the neighborhood. Of course, it's hard to door knock right now. Are you door knocking now, Jennifer? Are you doing any open houses right now? No. Um, when we don't have COVID, you can door knock at that point. But right now, you're definitely going to be posting on social media. Make information packets about specifics of the neighborhood, pricing, financial information, your lender's information, fun, fun tips about the neighborhood. How about some of the best vendors in that neighborhood? Can you go get flyers and things from them? So it all makes puts it pretty in the packet for you. Order food and drinks. We're going to come to that in just a minute. Ask the seller uh, to board their animals. This Again, if this is your listing, you do not want animals in the house of an open house. If the seller can't take the animals away, do not hold that house open. No animals allowed. That includes snakes and fish. Fish always smell no matter what. Don't do a fish house. Okay. Um, prepare market um, information board. I'm not going to show you that right now. Um, maybe I can get Jennifer. Do you, are you doing your information board still, Jennifer? Yes. I actually have it right next to me right now. Can you show us? I can, and then I'm going to have to jump off quickly because I have a, another appointment. Um, oops. This is my, it looks like a sixth grade science project, but it's actually so amazing, the conversations that happen. Um, you see that? So that's mm -hmm. all sorts of information about the neighborhood, about her business, about the house. You see all those fun things that she's got? That is actually set up in the house. Where do you primarily set that up, Jennifer? Um, it depends on the house because some houses... Um, oh, and one quick thing. I use... Hold on. These are plastic sheets. And then I slide my pieces out. So they're interchangeable. If I'm in a luxury home or a condo or whatever, I can switch out the details. And so I'm not reinventing the wheel. Um, because some houses that I chose to do open houses were vacant and there was nothing. I actually went and bought a card table and then I created my own little spot and that became the hangout spot for people to ask questions. But if it's furnished, I will find a dining room table and I'll have my materials interspersed throughout the whole house. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think if I'm one of you guys, I would be um, seeing if I could reach out to Jennifer and maybe even seeing when she's doing an open house next? Yeah, I sure would, right? Better not be calling without your coffee ready to be ordered. <laughs> Bring your coffee. Sorry. Or is that better to have it all in one area or would you put like the plastic and have it all over the house? So as they're walking through, they're finding out more information. I have actually a, a tote that I carry other information in and I have repeat information in different places because some people want to talk to me. Some people don't even want to make eye contact. So I want them to leave with something, see something and realize that I actually do know what I'm doing, whether or not you want to talk to me, because some of the most unfriendly people have called me a week later. Okay. So, Great I'll answer. answer. You're, you. cre you're creating a marketplace inside that house. Yeah. You are, you're selling the house and you're creating that, that information. Jennifer, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. 
So that's the marketing board. That's what she's talking about. That would be in a place where you can stop people and have a conversation. You're going to review and practice your scripts and you're going to ensure the open house is listed on the MLS no later than the evening before. You want to make sure it shows that it's open. Most people, remember, will be looking for open houses online for that weekend if they are out searching for open houses. They will see it. Um, I've done it before where I went to do the open house and it wasn't listed on the MLS and nobody knew about it except for my signs. I want all of the available avenues for people to be able to um, um, get to that house and find me. Make sense? So make sure. Now, if it's not on the MLS, you're going to call that agent and say, hey, when were you going to put the open house on the MLS? I need to have that on if I'm going to do the open house. If they say, oh, I'm out of town. And I won't be able to get it on there. You're saying, oh, okay. Um, I unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to hold it open. Unless it's an agent that you're really trying to get to know really well. Like if it was Jennifer and it's my very first time I'm holding an open house for her, I might still do it. So- <laughs> Jennifer didn't have it listed. You should be smacking me. <laughs> there you go. All right. Makes How sense many so far? Again? I'm sorry. How many days do you need it listed? If what? you just make sure you've got it on as an open house on the night before you do the open house, you're good. Okay. A couple of days before it'd be great, but that's where that is. Okay. All right. Before the open house, the day of, okay. Make sure your phone battery is charged. So I've done this before where my phone died and I need to get into the open house and I do not have the ability to get in because my phone died. Ah, <laughs> can't get in. Make sure your phone's charged. Okay, strategically place signs, balloons, and directional arrows. Make sure you remove debris from the front of the house. If the house was um, uh, let's say there was a windstorm the day before. I'm going to make sure I sweep off that front porch, whatever it takes. I'm going to make sure I really look at it. Okay. Set out food and drink. Now let's talk for a minute about the five senses, shall we? All right. Every open house, I am going to make sure that I address the five senses. What are the five senses? Anybody know what they are? Sight. Sight. Great. Next. Smell. 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 Uh-huh. So sight, smell, what else? Sound. Sound. Taste. Taste. Touch. Touch. Got it. Okay. Sight. Let's start with sight. We've created a lot of sight and a lot of energy by all of our sign placement. Now let's go into the house. Every single solitary light in the house, even if it's a night light, is turned on. Every single light is turned on. By the way, during an open house, people have a habit of turning lights off. You're going to be continually walking through the house and turning lights back on. <laughs> just one of those things, just be prepared for. But turn, but all lights in the house are on, visual. I don't want a bunch of shoes in the front, front way, right? I don't want people to have stuff in the sink. Visually, it is beautiful inside. Got it? All right, let's talk about sound do you play music or do you not play music absolutely yes play music yes right. play music okay would you ever not play music i don't uh, think i would no i, I would, would say depending something. on the number of people here's the thing to understand silence can sell things what if it's the most beautifully quiet neighborhood and all you hear are the birds? I probably, especially it's spring and summer and it's quiet outside. I don't know if I would always play music. I don't think I would. If the sound can sell it, if the sound of birds and nothing, and I can have even the door open, you better believe I'm not playing music. Let the sound sell it. You see where I'm going on that, Trina? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, let's say though I am playing music. Okay. I am on a horse property in Ravensdale. What kind of music am I playing? Country. I'm playing country music. <laughs> if I am in a loft condo in Bellevue, what kind of music am I playing? 
bar music? <laughs> Maybe classical or something. Could be. I'm probably going to do adult contemporary in, in that one, contemporary, right? Contemporary, yes. Okay. Um, I am in a $3 million, 7,000 square foot mansion. What am I playing? Some Great. kind of smooth jazz. Yes, yes. Jazz would be fantastic. Might be classical, depending on Easy the following. architecture of the house. Do you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. If it is a uh, Mediterranean revival, you better believe I'm playing classical music. If it is a really modern house, I'm playing jazz. I have to make sure that the energy matches the house. So for example, let's say that I've got a house and it's all, um, it's all grays and it's all blacks and it's all, um, let's say it's all greens. That's the colors inside the house. And I'm wearing pink. Do I match? No. No. Don't wear pink in that kind of house. It's pink and green. Don't get, look, good, look good together. You need to match the house's energy just like your sound, just like your sight. Does that make sense? See how we get hyper, hyper critical on this? I always want to make sure that I am dressed as neutrally as possible every single time. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I always have fuzzy slippers. I like my fuzzy slippers. I used to be known for my fuzzy slippers, by the way. Okay. Really great. Now, um, smell. What is the very best smell you could possibly have in a house? Number one best smell. Cookies. Baked mm, items. Good. Number two, Kelly. Clean. What'd you say, Lauren? Clean, clean laundry. That, that's nice, but that's not the best smell to have in a house. What's the very best smell to have in a house? Hmm. When I say it, you're going to go, of course. You ready? Fresh baked bread. Hmm. Fresh baked bread. I don't care what house it is. Fresh baked bread always works. By the way, I used to have 10 bread makers. And every time I had a listing, I would tell my clients to make bread every day. They could just take it to work, didn't care. But every day, when, before they went to work, they had to turn on the bread maker and make bread. So every person who walked in that house while it was on the market, they got to smell bread. Okay, now let me give you the hint. If they don't do that, the next one is cookies is great. I actually was the cookie baker. I actually got permission. I used to bake cookies, but I'm going to give you a way to do it. So you don't have to do that anymore. I want you to get a pan of brownies. Mm. What I want you to do is I want you to put those brownies on the microwave safe plate. And I want you to microwave them in the oven for 20 seconds. That house will smell like brownies. The yeah. pizza, please. So if you, so get some brownies, put them on a microwave safe plate, microwave them for 20 seconds and then set them out for people to eat. Okay. But every, and you can keep one aside because they'll, they'll start getting gross if you keep microwaving them. About once an hour, I have to do is, is, is nuke a brownie and it's going to sell great. Now here's another trick that you can use. You're going to get permission from the seller to do this one, but you can place, you remember you got every light in the house on, right? In every room that you're in, if you place just one drop of vanilla extract on a light bulb, it will make the house smell like vanilla sugar cookies. Hmm. Now, do not use do not use a candle and do not use the diffusers. Some people are very allergic to that. So you actually want real food smell and re using real food if possible, because the other smells can be heavy. Sometimes they can feel artificial. Okay. And you always want it to be a food smell. By the way, here's a great food smell for the summertime. What do you think the best summertime smell is? Barbecued ribs. <laughs> That's always fun. That would actually be really cool. Serve those at an open house. Why not? Okay. Here's your best summer smell. If it's not sugar cookies, it's going to be lemonade. So always citrus. serve lemonade in the summer. Serve lemonade in the summer and use fresh squeezed lemons because that will be in the house. Serve that. Okay. Now, if it's the middle of winter, by the way, I am always going to serve something at my open house. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Six one. Oh my God. So you're going to teach this next time, right? Awesome. Thank you, lady. Um, so here's the thing is I'm always going to serve something always. Okay. Because remember taste now. So we've gone through smell and now it's taste. Now 
if they have, they have white carpet, there's no way I'm serving brownies. What could I serve? Sugar cookies. Sugar cookies could be great. Okay, maybe crumbs, don't know. But there's lots of things I can do. I could do packets of M&Ms. When it was Marshawn Lentz during Seahawks season, I used to do um, Skittles. Skittles. Okay. <laughs> Protein bars always work great. I love doing, it's assortment of cookies, maybe brownies. I'm, I'm gonna serve food if I can. Um, be keto conscious, maybe it's nuts that I'm serving, right? I might have some options. I'm always gonna have bottles of water, always. Always serving bottles of water, okay? Somebody needs something to drink, have, have napkins, everything. So you're gonna bring everything in with you. You're gonna take everything out. So you're gonna have your garbage bag. You're gonna have your little plates. You're gonna bring everything in. If you bring it in, you bring it out. By the way, one other thing for smell, you might also bring in a bouquet of flowers if the kitchen is really fabulous and you wanna have that particular, um, uh, you just wanna really show it off with some flowers. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome, okay. Thanks, Bill. Awesome. So now we have touched sight. We have touched sound. We've touched smell. We've touched taste. Now let's do touch. Touch and texture go hand in hand. Okay. If the house is really cold, it's empty, doesn't feel like anything. I got to bring some kind of texture in. That's when I would have flowers. Okay. That's my, I might even bring a little chair and just put a throw on it. But texture matters as far as, because it's, we're going for visual texture. People not might be touching everything, but I want something to look like it's touchable. That makes sense. Hmm. So that's really how we talk about touch. Okay. What do you think about the five senses? I like it. All right. Yeah. All right, let me go back to sharing my screen and we're gonna go pretty quick. I, I'm gonna tell you guys when Jennifer does this class, she'll take you on an open house um, uh, tour and we practice all of these kind of things. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. We're gonna set out food and drinks in the kitchen area and dining room only. Arrive and at home uh, at the home a minimum of one hour. The agent is always going to be checking in to see if you got there on time or early. You're going to get there early. You're going to call or text the listing broker and let them know that you've arrived. That's awesome. Do you think that if you are really great at communicating, that they are going to um, feel great about you holding their house open? Mm -hmm. Sure. Check the front yard and entrance and unlock the back door so people can get in and out. Turn all the lights on, including closets. Adjust the temperature. If it's freezing cold, you do not want it freezing cold, um, especially in the winter. If it's really hot outside, make it nice and cool, either one. Open up all the drapes, unless the, the, the windows are filthy and the neighbors are filthy too. Place flyers, business cards, tablet, computer, all of your marketing information that's going in, depending on where you're at, that's going in the, the house. By the way, call um, Jennifer and ask her when she's doing her next open house and go see it. She, it's, it's brilliant. She's better at it than I am. I used to be really good at this. She's really better at it than I am now. So I would do it. Turn on soft music if, it, if, it, uh, uh, if it's important. Check the bathrooms. Please close the toilet lids. You might have to go in and people using them, go close it again. Verify that valuables, prescription drugs are not accessible. Have information packets ready, but not in sight. You want them to come to you for information packets. And then check the front, front house and backyard, including doors and fences for security. All right, during the open house, you're going to greet and build rapport with each guest, including children, shake their hands. Ask guests to sign in using your Open Home Pro or your Open Home app. And even on your command, you can now create an Open House sign in, which is very, very cool. Um, meet with Crystal, she can teach you how to do that. Ask open ended qualifying questions. Um, I'm not going to go into the 1042 unless I get through this real quickly, and I'll teach you what that is because we're coming right against our time here. Um, share your mobile app with everyone. Arrange follow up appointments with people. Make notes about the guest real estate needs. Make sure that you're keeping a pad. You've got their name. You're writing down all the things that are really pertinent. Keep replenishing your food and drinks. Make sure it looks good that you're sending it. 
watch for safety issues. <laughs> there so far? All right. Now we're going into after the open house. Put the house back in its original order. Close the drapes if they were closed. Turn off the music lights, uh, reset the temperature. You're basically backing out everything that you did. Collect all packets, signs, cards. Leave the house exactly as when you arrived. Leave a thank you note for the seller. Here's what you're gonna do. You're simply gonna leave a note saying, um, thank you so much for allowing me in your beautiful home to host the, to hold the house open. I will give all the feedback to your agent. Make it nice and wonderful. That will make them feel special. Then before I leave the house, I'm gonna email the agent with all of the feedback that I heard about the house, as well as all the contact information for all of the agents that showed up that gave me their business card. Okay, because we wanna make sure that the listing agent can contact them to see if their clients are interested in the house. Update your database, add appointments to your pipeline tool and click on the plus sign uh, of your CGI page. We don't do that anymore. Are you one login? Boy, these are old. I got to update all this kind of stuff. Send thank you notes to all the neighbors who attended. There you go. Call and email all the visitors. A mail thank you note to the listing agent. Mail a thank you note. You're already calling them, you're emailing them, but then you're going to mail them a thank you note every single time. And ask to be on their list of agents to host their next open houses. But I'm always going to send them a thank you note. Say, hey, thanks. Thanks once again, Jennifer. I know this is my 10th open house for you, but I just really appreciate you. Every time. And then drip on attendees using your um, weekly items of value for 12 weeks. I'm going to um, drip on them. All right. Lots of action steps for you. You guys are going to see all of these. I'm not going to go all the way through these. Let's see all of these. And then there's a lot of scripts in your packet. All right, I'm gonna quickly go through, I got three minutes, I'm gonna go through 1042. 1042 is really important. It's how you have a conversation at an open house. All right, you're asking these questions. What are 10 things, because more than likely, remember, they're not gonna buy that house. What are the 10 things they absolutely would love to have in their new house? 10 things. Four things they must have in their house. And two deal breakers. What are two deal breakers? 10 things they'd like, four things they must have, and two things that if the house had it, they're out of here. They would not have it. Mine were always power lines and trains. If it had power lines and trains, I'm out. Why? Because we had a house with power lines and trains, they were pain in the butt. Never want power lines and trains again. You with me? So as you have this conversation, you're simply going to say it. So Trina, let you and I, let, let you and I role play for just a second. Okay. Great. So, so Trina, as we're thinking about your, uh, the house that, that is you want to do, because we know this is not going to be your house. What are the 10 things that you'd really want to have? And what are some of the things you'd actually really want to have in a house? Um, a nice space kitchen is very important. Okay. Fantastic. A nice kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. I love to cook. So big kitchen, yep. um, a big master bath, a love nice walk-in closet, large yoga for kids. Great. Uh, great schools. Love it. Love it. What else? Um, a nice covered patio would be beautiful. Ooh, great. Love that. Mm -hmm. huh? A large great room and a large dining room because I host holiday events for my family. Love it. Love it. I'm going to keep having this conversation with her, guys. I'm going to get to things. Okay, so of the, all those things that you mentioned, Trina, what are the most important things for you? I would say the yard, the kitchen, and the large space for entertaining. Okay, fantastic. So you guys entertain. That's important. You love to cook. Even the backyard, entertaining, entertaining, entertaining. That's what I'm hearing. Am I correct? Yep, absolutely. Love that. Okay, is there anything that if the house had it, you'd walk away, there's no way you would do it? Do you have any things that would be deal breakers for you? Oh, good. Mold, sure. uh, smells, smells, if it was by the lines. Okay, I got it. Right, so that's fantastic. So um, there are quite a few houses that I can think of that are in that, that range. Now I'm gonna start having a question of qualifying questions about, about this with her guys. We're gonna start talking about what, what has she ever been pre-approved, what price she has. I'm not gonna go into all of this. This is the part that we usually do when we're in 
uh, at the house and we role play a lot of this. So I'm sorry we're not going through that today. Um, I'm going to really encourage you. I'm going to actually ask Jennifer if she can teach this class as soon as we open up to be able to do open houses and we can have um, a lot of people at the house at one time. I'm going to ask her to redo this. Okay. Was this helpful though? What do you think? Did it get some good stuff? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Very helpful. Awesome. Awesome. So you should have been emailed um, all of the things that we just reviewed. Make sure you just go through that. Um, do it. And then I would sit down either with your coach uh, or with your team leader or with one of your mentors and go through this and make sure you're shadowing people who do open houses a lot. Jennifer is such a perfect person to shadow for an open house. Mm -hmm. She might be a great person, but there's a lot of people I know. Lindsay does a brilliant open house. So there might be other people that you can, you can go to, but that's how we go. Okay. What is your Thank biggest you. take? You betcha. You betcha. Anybody have a biggest takeaway before we walk away? The five senses, the tracking that. I didn't ever think of that before. I love that, Sarah. What else? I've always thought of sign place, but not so many, but it makes sense of what you're saying. Great. Love it. Okay. One more. Learning to critique the three pictures, looking at the three pictures and trying to pick strategically. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it, Esther? It's the three pictures. All right, guys, thank you so much for two minutes over. Thank I'm going to let you Thank you. You betcha. I'll see you later. No, 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 no. You're, are you le you're leaving. You're done. I am. I'm done. I'm done. Well,